What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Julie. If you're new here, and welcome back to another Cocktails and Combos, where I am going to be showing you all how to make a good handcrafted cocktail while discussing the recent episode of The Real Housewives of Potomac. And y'all, this episode tonight was so good, I was highly satisfied. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Tonight, I'm going to be making a Martinez cocktail. So this episode started off with Giselle and Mia having a conversation at the pool bar. And y'all, the producers this season are doing an excellent job just building and adding on to the scene. Why did they have Giselle's bubble guts all up in the audio? I thought that was hilarious, y'all. It was so funny. They had Giselle's dag on bubble guts all up in the audio. So Mia and Giselle are at the bar and they're kind of discussing what happened last night, um, particularly the argument that happened between Mia and Wendy. And I thought it was interesting because Giselle made it seem like Wendy was jealous and insecure of Mia. And I was just like, when did that happen? Like, when did this conversation point come up? Like, of course, we all know Giselle has a history of stirring the pot, but I thought that was an interesting point that all of a sudden now, Wendy is jealous of Mia. But anyway, they don't spend too much time on the Wendy and Mia conversation. They immediately segue to Mia's friend, Jacqueline, and how Mia, basically shares with Giselle that she feels like Jacqueline thinks that Jacqueline can take a bunch of shots at Mia and Mia's just not supposed to say anything or do anything. Like Mia's just supposed to be Jacqueline's punching bag. And again, y'all, if y'all, if you all have tuned into my channel before, I feel personally like the fights that Mia and Jacqueline have had, I feel like Mia is justified in, you know, her feelings. Jacqueline has said some low blow stuff to Mia. So I feel like Mia is justified at, you know, taking hits and jabs back at Jacqueline if Jacqueline is sending it to Mia. So after that, they kind of discuss this bachelorette party and how, you know, strippers need to be there and Mia wants to be in charge of, you know, coordinating all the strippers because you know she has that past, y'all. Immediately after that, speaking about the whole Robin wedding situation. We cut to a scene where Robin's on the phone with her wedding planner and just reiterating that, hey, I don't want a big wedding. I don't want the pomp and circumstance. I literally just want a small ceremony with Lon and the boys. Robin just basically states that, you know, she just doesn't want the pressure of having a big wedding. I definitely feel like this is just Robin kind of dragging this whole one wedding storyline out. Um, I don't think it's gonna happen, but I will save you all another rant about that. Now, immediately following Robin's conversation with, with her wedding planner, that's when we cut to the scene where Ashley and Karen are having a conversation. And y'all, this was the kickoff and the catalyst to everything that else that transpired in this episode, y'all. Oh my gosh. I will say my girl Karen, she is a mess that I appreciate. I love Karen. She is hilarious. So let me finish my cocktail. Here we have our Martinez, y'all. Let me go sit down and let me get into this, y'all. It was so good. All right, cheers, y'all. Let me get a sip before I get into this, y'all. Okay, boom. Ashley and Karen are having a conversation at the pool and basically Karen is going in and telling Ashley, I didn't appreciate how Robin put me out there on blast, basically insinuating that, you know, my character is flawed. And Karen was just like, I know all of Robin's business. I know that this wedding is fake. I know that Juan has a girlfriend back in the DMV area and that she looks like me and they be hanging out in the Georgetown area, y'all. Whoa. So first and foremost, I just want to say, 
I love Karen. She is a character and a good character. Like she is hilarious. We all know that Karen has a way of kind of falsifying facts based on her Giselle Reed last season at Wendy's shade party, 50 shades of gray party, whatever the party was. And Karen was like, Giselle and her was out in Sing Sing doing whatever with whomever. And come to find out after the season was over, that was not true. So we sometimes have to take Karen's facts with a grain of salt, but I will say, I do agree with her, this wedding is fake, and I know that it was in the blogs not too long ago when they were still filming this show that Juan allegedly, allegedly, allegedly had a side piece. So I do think she may have a ground to stand on, but Karen was going in. And the crazy thing I thought about it was, after this was all said and done, was the fact that Karen, says to Ashley, don't say anything, don't say anything. Like, I wanna be able to have this conversation with Robin once we get back home. First and foremost, one, why would you ever think that you could tell Ashley something and that she was gonna keep it to herself? Ashley is an OG Potomac housewife. So if you all are like me, who have been rocking with this crew since day one, you all know Ashley cannot hold water. Ashley is going to run and tell anyone who will stand there and listen to her. And what did she do after her and Karen got finished talking? She ran and started putting it out there, basically saying, well, she didn't say anything, but she had the ladies do a guessing game. And of course, Wendy and Candace were going down a list of people. And once they got to Robin, Ashley's eyes were like, so I don't know why Karen thought that she could have a conversation with Ashley and Ashley was gonna keep it to herself. Now, before I move on to the next part, I will say again, kudos to the producers, the editors who are doing this season. They are adding more and it just makes it more entertaining as a viewer. When I tell you I was dying laughing when they had that freaking law and order scene, or a text with Karen, and they started sketching out Juan's other lady. Oh my gosh, I was dying. It was so funny. It was hilarious how they were doing the sketch, and basically Karen insinuated that Juan's other woman looks like her. And so they had the sketch on the screen that basically looked like a pixelated Karen. Hilarious, thought that was funny. And something else that Karen mentioned was the fact that Robin and Juan have this agreement. So Karen is basically insinuating that Robin is not oblivious to this, that Robin knows that Juan has another chick and basically like she cool with it, allegedly. Now, I wouldn't be surprised, I will say that. I would not be surprised if that's the case. Again, Robin and Juan give off co-parenting roommates. They do not give off the vibe of like, hey, we are actually in a passionate marriage or engagement or relationship. They just give off vibes of like they are roommates or they are cool. Now, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think they have been like friends forever. They've known each other growing up. So, I mean, if you've been with someone that long, it may just be like, look, we have been around each other for so long that we are each other's friends. Um, and you know, we save all that romance-ish for other people. We just, you know, we friends, we love each other, we have children together, whatever, whatever. So that may be the case. I honestly think that Juan and Robin are roommates. I do not think they have uh, this passionate love affair going on, but that is my personal opinion, y'all. So as I stated, Ashley leaves the conversation, runs right to the bar, and starts kind of sprinkling the tea herbs to the other women and just letting them know that, look, Karen is running off at the mouth, alleging something about Robin's uh, soon-to-be husband. So I'm just letting y'all know what's up in the come down the pipeline. So after the bar scene where the ladies are guessing at what's going on, the ladies get on the bus and head to the market. And I thought it was funny because Ashley was like, oh, we got quesadilla on the bus if you are um, hungry. And Giselle was like, mind you, Giselle has the bubble guts. So Giselle was like, why would I eat quesadillas on a bus? 
That seems deplorable. Not deplorable, KZD is on the bus. I thought that was funny. The, the jokes this episode were really, really good. The jokes this episode were good. I love them. So after Giselle, you know, makes her little deplorable comment, the ladies get on the bus and they're kicking. And I thought this scene was really funny and cute because Robin brought up this whole game on the bus that they were playing, um, basically shady facts, and the women were going along with it. And I thought it was hilarious. Robin asks, who watches the most porn? And Karen raises her hand like, and Karen's like, I think it's beautiful. I thought, look, Karen was on one this episode. Hilarious. And I thought it was fun and cute that all the ladies started sharing what type of porn they like. This episode, they seem to actually like each other a little bit more. Again, last episode, I was like, it just seems like nobody likes each other and it's starting to creep in and it's not making for a good, enjoyable show. But this episode, they all seem to actually get along more and they actually liked each other. So I appreciated these scenes on the bus um, and some of the later on scenes where there wasn't much drama or shade being thrown. Um, it was just the ladies just having good times like you have with your girlfriend. So I thought that was fun. So they head off to the market and they're shopping, having a good time, kicking like girlfriends. And mind you, I thought the market was pretty expensive. Like I think it was Robin bought something at the market and the retailer was like $103. And I was like, what? I thought the Mexican markets were more affordable, but I guess they went to the more bougie, prestigious markets that I'm not in that tax bracket yet to enjoy. Emphasis on yet, it's gonna happen y'all. I'm gonna be at the markets. They also may have went to the same markets that the ladies of the Real Housewives of New York went to back when they did a trip to Mexico, but who knows? I digress. So while the ladies are out at the market shopping, eventually Ashley pulls Robin aside and goes ahead and kind of lays it down. And I guess Ashley thought that she was staying true to Karen's request by not outwardly saying, hey, this is what Karen said. Cause she did it at the hotel bar with Wendy and Candace and she somewhat did it with Robin where she was just like, well, you know, I was asked not to say anything, but if you want to guess, I'm not going to not let you know who it is. And so she was kind of beating around the bush and tiptoeing, telling Robin what Karen said. But eventually she was like, look, you're going to find out anyway. Karen basically said, Juan got a side piece and they be tiptoeing around Georgetown and she looks like Karen. And so Robin picks up the phone and calls Juan. And when I tell you, y'all, you can hear Juan's Baltimore accent coming through the phone. I could hear all that Baltimore coming out. Basically, he was hot. He was pissed off, basically like, look, that's why I don't like to do this show. That's why I don't like to be around these women. You're full of drama, which I personally feel like Robin called Juan to have a moment. If, again, if you've been watching the show from season one, you know that Juan has been one of those husbands with the show that he's just like, I don't want anything to do with it. Juan has always come off as one of the men on the show that's like, I was forced to be here. I don't want to be here. It just, from season one, Juan and Robin have always come off as like, Robin is cool with Giselle and she's cool with Sharice. And that's kind of how Robin got her foot in the door with the Real Housewives. And if you are Real Housewives, at least from what I know of the show and, you know, podcasts and stuff, it's like, it's the, you know, you have to open the doors. Like, it's a reality TV show. I believe these shows are shot over several, several months. So it's kind of hard for someone to be on a show like this and not everyone be involved. The Real Housewives does a good job at maintaining a balance with the kids on the show. Like, I will say, you don't really see See too many of the kids getting a lot of TV time. They are part of the show, they do pop up, but the husbands, the spouse, whoever you're with, it's it's almost hard to not be an equal and active participant on the show if you are married or living with someone who is a full-time housewife. And Juan has always come off as like, look, Robin got picked up for the show and 
I by default got dragged into it, but he, it is, it's public knowledge. He does not like to be on the show. He has skipped out on certain reunions. Now I know Robin has stated in the past that, oh, he's not at the reunion because he had a basketball game, this, that, and the third, but I feel like the past few reunions, he has not been there. I, I can't even remember the last reunion he was at. It may have been that reunion where they were wearing all white, the one they flashed back to in this epi tonight's episode. I don't know, but he doesn't show up. We don't get that many scenes with him. And so when Robin decided to call Juan, it just seemed like she was reaching for a moment. It is not lost upon all of us. Robin does not have that much entertaining storyline to share with all of us on this show. The only thing she has is this mystery and big question mark of whether her and Juan are gonna get married. And Karen, I will say this, Karen basically threw Robin a lifeline when it comes to storyline and entertainment because had Karen not started this, you know, what would Robin have really been talking about? So Robin should be thinking Karen. So Robin calls Juan, Juan's pissed off. He's going on about how he doesn't wanna be on the show. And I also thought it was very interesting and telling that Robin was really calm on this phone call. She was really, really calm. And that only made me feel like this was her kind of setting up a scene for herself because she was just too calm. It also made me think that maybe, maybe, maybe allegedly, maybe allegedly, maybe allegedly, maybe what Karen said about Juan and Robin having an agreement, there may be some truth to it because Robin was awfully calm on this phone call, in my opinion. Like, if someone told me that my husband was walking around with a side piece that looked like Karen Huger in Georgetown, and they've been dating for years, I would be pissed off. Even if I had already known about it, I would be pissed off because it's like, hold up, no, we're not gonna be bringing this up to light. Like, I would be pissed. I'd be pissed at Karen for bringing it up on the show. I'd be pissed at Juan if it was true or not. And even if I believed in my man and was like, this is just a lie, Karen's just doing the most, whatever, whatever, I would still be pissed off on the phone. I feel like I'm pissed now talking about it and Juan's not even my husband. So I felt like Robin was extremely calm for her to be getting this news. I felt like she, you know, kind of, was reaching for a moment on the show. And this is probably about the biggest moment that, you know, Robin is gonna have on the show. With the exception of when she ran up on Ashley in Ashley's Australia restaurant, y'all. This is probably Robin's second biggest moment. So the ladies are at the lunch table and they just getting at it. So Robin basically calls Karen out about talking about her and Karen's just basically like, I didn't appreciate you talking about me last night, trying to damage my character and who I am. Karen, she does not hold any punches and she does not back down. Karen was just like, look, your wedding's fake and Juan has another girlfriend and we all know about it. Now, I did find it interesting that almost most of the women at the table, specifically Candace and Wendy, and I think Ashley had said they heard this before. And again, I remember back, I think in the summertime when this was going on that like the word on the street was that Juan had a side piece. Allegedly, 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 allegedly. That reached me all the way down to seven by seven. So who knows what's going on up in the DMV. But allegedly that was out there back in the summertime and most of the women at the table had said they heard it. Except for of course, Giselle. Giselle was like, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear nothing about that. They gonna have each other's back y'all. They gonna have each other's back. So Robin and Karen are going back and forth and Giselle keeps trying to put her two cents in it. and. I Karen was funny. Karen was like, Giselle, be quiet, because you ain't you ain't even nowhere near close to an altar. Like, Karen was not holding back any punches. She was coming at freaking Robin and freaking Giselle. It was funny. I am so happy that Karen is like, she is upgrading with her reads and upgrading with like her reflex when it comes to getting at these ladies. And at this point, I think the arguing and disagreement is going on for so long because the ladies end up taking shots midway through the argument while Karen and 
Robin are going back and forth. So eventually, Robin decides to pull out her receipts and share with the group that Karen has her side piece, Blue Eye, and they were out in Vegas not too long ago. And not they were out in Vegas and Blue Eye was wearing his um, red skin <laughs> gear. Like I, I felt like I kept hearing people was like, he was out in Vegas with his red skin gear, y'all. Um, but if y'all have, again, been maintaining the show, it was alleged back in season three, maybe season four, that Karen had, you know, had her boyfriends around the Potomac area. And one of the boyfriends had blue eyes and that he was Karen's driver. Um, and that basically Karen has had multiple affairs on Ray. Allegedly, allegedly. And I'm not gonna lie, I, I'm, I would not be surprised if that was true. I would just say that. I would not be surprised if that was true. Karen and Ray have been together for a very long time. There is an age difference between Karen and Ray. And from the outside looking in, watching the show, Karen, Karen and Ray, they, you know, opposites attract. They're different. Ray seems like the more older, achieved man that's kind of like, you know, chill, not about all the extra stuff, whatever, whatever. And Karen seems like, we all see Karen. Karen is... Karen is Karen, okay? Karen is the life of the party. Karen is the center, like she wants to be in the center of attention. She wants to be talked about. Karen is Karen. And I can see and I can believe that Karen, you know, has her a nice little piece that kind of can keep up with her. I can believe that. Alleged, I'm not saying I know anything. I'm just saying like, I could believe that Karen has a little side piece that kind of, is her energizer button. So Robin shares the receipts and she has pictures y'all. She has pictures and I'm mad, which I understand for legal purposes. Um, but I am mad that we didn't get a close up shot of blue eyed. We didn't get to see the picture ourselves. It's like this, this is one of those things where this has been a continued topic throughout the show that we, the viewers deserve to see this receipt that Robin bought to the table. So I was upset. We were treated like Karen because Robin was not letting Karen see the photo. Hilarious. Robin was like, you see this Mia? You see this Giselle? You see this Ashley? And Karen was in the corner like, can I see? Can I see? She was begging. She was like, I want to see. If you talking about me, like, let me see it. And Robin was like, no, you can't see it. So we were treated like Karen this episode, y'all. After Robin gets done showing the picture around the table of Karen's blue eyed boo, Karen basically is like, I've been protecting Juan. And going back earlier in the season, when everybody, Giselle, Ashley, Giselle's friend, whatever, whatever, was alleging that Chris was being inappropriate, Karen was basically like, you know, there was a husband on the show that was inappropriate with me and I just kept it to myself. Like, you know, it's not like they crossed an extreme line. So I didn't feel the need to share. And I'm sure, like me, I'm sure everyone else assumed that person was Michael Darby. Cause I know I didn't. I thought it was Michael. Cause Michael is just fresh y'all, he fresh. But Karen puts it out there that it was Juan that Juan was squeezing and hugging her, that her titties was like popping to her back or whatever she said. Like he was just being fresh. And she states that in one of the reunions, um, the conversation of a threesome came up with Juan and Robin. Now, Karen states that Robin was like, yes, I would have a threesome, but we saw with the receipts from Bravo that Robin was like, I don't wanna have a threesome, but Juan was like, look, we gotta keep it fresh. Karen alleges that Juan pulled her aside and asked if Karen could have a threesome with Robin and Juan. Y'all, come on now. Come on, <sighs> gosh. I will say that some of the things that Karen said in this episode, I do believe that there's some truth and validity to it. I don't believe that Karen 
created this narrative of Juan having an affair, allegedly. I don't believe she came up with that. And the fact that the other ladies heard it themselves lets me know that like, this wasn't something that Karen just pulled out of her butt, like Sing Sing and Susu with Giselle. Like there's like, people have heard this rumor. I don't believe that she's making up like some of the things that Karen said this episode like I do think there's a little validity to it but when she came out and said that Juan asked her to have a threesome with him and Robin I was just like come on Karen come on like you almost could back up your ish but then you you just going crazy but I guess I shouldn't be surprised because she literally said and insinuated that Juan <laughs> has a side piece that looks like her now, Karen is a beautiful woman. I'm not saying that she is, she can hold her weight and she is aging like fine wine. We all know that Karen has had some work, good work. She looks great, but um, come on now, come on now. I, I would have to think that Juan would probably go for somebody that doesn't look like Karen. So Karen stating that Juan asked her to have a threesome was Karen pulling a Karen, y'all. In true Giselle fashion, Giselle makes a toast and toast to the receipts. And after the ladies took the toast, I felt like things were kind of simmering down and settling down after the Karen Robin blow up. And then I felt like Giselle was just kind of sitting back like, hmm. Like she was scoping out, okay, I need another moment here. And I felt like Giselle was just looking for, okay, who's going to be the next person? Because we just can't sit at this table and not have some drama. So who has some tea that I can bring up? And she segues to Mia and Jacqueline. And Giselle acts like, so have y'all figured everything out? And Jacqueline like starts blowing up at the ladies, basically like, this is between me and Mia. Y'all need to stop poking around. We will figure it out when it's time. Like she's just having a moment here where she's just like, leave me alone, leave me alone. Like stop asking me if we figure things out. And Jacqueline goes on about how she's just hurt by how Mia is doing her and that, you know, she's had Mia's back how, you know, when this whole cancer, no cancer ooh, came about that she rolled for Mia and basically put it out there on Front Street that Mia may have been falsifying the facts about her having cancer and how, you know, her mom took Mia in when they were younger. And Mia was like, but I was the one spending Mother's Day with your mother and not you. Come on, Mia. We don't know what, what, why, we, we don't know all the facts or why Jacqueline didn't spend Mother's Day with her mother. Maybe she was on vacation, who knows? But they were going back and forth and I felt like in this scene, like I felt like Jacqueline, she was just, she just seemed like she was having a moment. She seemed like she was breaking down. And I took from it that, I don't know if Jacqueline was really fully prepared for coming on this show. Like, I feel like she may have came up here thinking it was just gonna be fun, ish and giggles, like, and I just feel like this was a moment where Jacqueline kind of broke a little bit because she seemed like she was really, she was agitated and upset at Mia, but she almost took her frustrations out at all the other ladies. And I just feel like she may not have been truly prepared for being on the show. Like she seemed like she had had it with all of it. And I thought Mia was talking to Jacqueline like she was a child. Like she, she was like, I'm exhausted with her. I'm exhausted with her. She's like, I told her not to come on this trip because she was just doing the most. Mia was like, she's been acting like this all week. Like Mia was talking about Jacqueline like she was a child. And I, I'm i I'm now at the point where I just feel like we need to be done with this Jacqueline Mia thing because I, I honestly don't think Jacqueline is built to be on this show. And I mean, I think it takes a special woman to be a real housewife. Um, I really do. I love this show. I don't know if I myself personally could be on this show because the women on this show are just very like catty and it would get to me. Um, so I don't fault her for having a moment, but I just kind of feel like, uh, it just felt like as a viewer, we may be going into like a real sensitive moment and we actually need to check on Jacqueline because she seems like she's breaking down. A positive moment out of all this drama was Mia turns to Wendy and basically is like, look, I really want to like you. 
I really do. And, you know, I just want to have this kind of coming to Jesus moment and just kind of mend things. Like, because I really think you are a admirable woman, but she's put some shade in there. It's like, but I think you have some insecurities. And I was just like, y'all put me on game. Did I miss where, am I like overlooking, you know, Wendy being jealous or insecure of me and her life? Like, I'm almost certain I have not missed that. I think that is just uh, Mia and Giselle being delusional, but whatever. Mia has a moment and Wendy wants to kind of clap back, but all the women are like, let her talk, let her talk. Um, which I think it was in Wendy's right to clap back at Mia for that. I think you're insecure, but I do think in an effort to kind of move forward, I think it was good that Mindy didn't go in on Wendy there. And, you know, they kind of decided to table it for the moment, but I did appreciate that. And all the drama and BS that happened at the table, we did have a small glimmer of, okay, maybe there's some, can be a positive moment amongst these women who have prior history and beef with each other. Let's hold our breaths, y'all, because who knows? Season eight, next season, you know, Wendy and Mia may be back at it, but who knows? So the ladies leave the lunch table. They're heading out. Jacqueline's at the bar crying. I Again, I don't think she was prepared to be on TV. I think she's having a moment. She's breaking down. Fast forward, the ladies are getting ready for dinner, and Wendy goes to Mia's room, and they have, a, a, like, they actually expand on their initial coming to Jesus moment. And they're basically like, hey, look, don't know where, well, Mia was like, I don't know where we went wrong. And Wendy was like, girl, you threw a margarita at me. You threw a drink at me, what do you mean? But I think what Mia was saying in that moment was prior to the margarita throwing, I don't know where we got on this beef situation. The Miami scene was not the first time that Mia and Wendy were going back and forth with each other. Um, this happened last season where they was going back and forth. When Mia was new and I think Mia was trying to come for Wendy's plastic surgery and Wendy had to get her in check. So I think that's what Mia meant by like, I don't know where this came from, but they had an honest conversation. They were able to speak and share things and it was a good moment. Like I appreciated it. And I like to say, I love Mia's dress. Mia's dress was beautiful. I loved it. Super cute, super sexy. I loved it. So the episode ends. They are all having a great dinner, kiki and whatever. And then the ladies say that as they were at the bar, they were out doing whatever. Drinks were going, shots were flowing, and Mia goes to Wendy and says, I wanna eat your box, your coochie. And that's where things end off. And y'all, I'm so excited for the next episode. One, I'm super excited to see Robin's bachelorette party. I, I, I think like all of us, we have been on this ride with Wa the Robin and Juan storyline. And the fact that we don't get to see the wedding, if there is a wedding y'all, allegedly if there's a wedding, we don't get to see the wedding. So it's like, if I can't see the wedding, I'll take what I can get. I wanna see this bachelorette party and the scenes from it seem really entertaining. Sharice looked like she lit, 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 lit. So I'm super excited about that. I'm also excited to kind of hear about kind of what happened with the ladies and the shots flowing in the alleged coochie gate. I'm gonna name it coochie gate. Um, I'm curious to see what that ends up being. Um, so I'm super excited about just the next episode. This was a good episode, y'all. I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. If y'all watched my last review, y'all know the last episode, I thought it was boring. It was a snooze fest. This was a good pick me up. I thought it had a great balance of drama and good positive girls time. And it's just, I love to see my favorite parts of The Real Housewives is when they take trips. And I felt like this was a great trip episode. Like there was a good balance of drama and girl girlfriends being 
girlfriends and having a good time and just enjoying themselves, having fun, having a good time. So I enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in y'all and watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like it. Liking it helps me to grow as a channel as well as comment below your thoughts. Did you enjoy this episode as much as I did y'all? Please let me know your thoughts and subscribe y'all. I'm going to be doing the rest of this season and when future Real House seasons come up, I will do it. So please subscribe because you're not gonna wanna miss it. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will catch you all in the next video below.